The decision really to go into Australia was was um, inspired by, you know, that's my home country. And really to sell to my home country is uh, wonderful. And, uh, and also to reach out to all the different states and things in Australia. Well, I think the quality, I really believe the quality of the product. Uh, we moved on from Rigby and to set our own operation up when Rigby changed, Rigby ownership changed and the people retired. Uh, and I think that it's the quality of the product. But it's also probably knowing the market, having the right people working for you and the people that have worked for me for a long time. They were, re they were previously with Rigby and they moved over to me. <laughs> it's the same old story around the world. And, um, and having the right people, but also really understanding a market, which is, I mean, you know, we, we still have a lot of competition in Australia and we still have competitors, but we are very much, you know, a very much a household name, uh, particularly Sunshine is the household name of the Sunshine Readers. So, you know, it was establishing a, a link and, and understanding the market and working the market. And one of the good things are that when I launched the Sunshine Readers um, in Canberra, actually, I launched them in the federal capital at a major show in Canberra. At the same time, there were Young Australia and several other programs launching. All of them are dead. Mine is reprinting still. And that shows the truth. If you produce quality, you live a long time. But if you produce junk, it disappears. It may be good for the first couple of years. You may have a, a big sale, but then you can't reprint it. And the big success in printing or publishing is the backlist as well as the forward list. The backlist is really the, the list that is the worth of a publishing house because people look at something that's already been created so they don't have to recreate it again. They can repackage it or re rewrite it in another way or develop it. And that's what the strength of your publishing house is. Well, you have a gut feeling. You look at the wind. You actually, as we say, and really, I suppose, you know, really, it's quite difficult for a woman. You don't you piss into the wind, probably. <laughs> but um, the situation is that you have you have to have a gut feeling. I have a gut feeling, and I did a lot of training in the early days, and I'm grateful for the people who taught me this, the teachers and the people. What works with a five-year-old works with a six-year-old, you know, and you never really grow up. You actually understand what works, and you do the very best you can within your budget. I mean, you can't do the impossible, but what you do is you always work on quality, because quality will live forever. Actually, mediocrity <laughs> dies, but... A lot of people will quickly publish something and publish it and they won't look at the quality of it and they will think and they may make a quick dollar. I mean, I could have made a lot more money in the world if I'd done deals or back-end deals or short-changed people or done other things. But really, at the end of the day, what's that all about? What's life all about? Life is about what you put into it and you get back. In education, you've got to remember this is a serious product. Because why many authors around the world work for me and many people have worked with me is because we reach the children who don't have a book in their home. We reach the children to change their life. And that's important. If you can change even one child's life, you have done something and achieved something. And really, that's why you've got to do the very best you can with the product. And we are very, very particular about how we develop a book how we develop the, the um, relationship of the, of the illustration to the text, etc.